Hi, and well, and welcome to Ticket to Life. Uh, I am Henry, and I hope that you are having a fabulous morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. So pull up a chair and get a beverage, any type of beverage, <laughs> coffee, tea, beer, wine. I don't really care. Or you don't have to get a beverage at all if you don't want to get a snack. <laughs> but let's just chat. Uh, I wanted to f uh, chat about fears today. What are our fears? Um, well, as we all know, um, and to my new listeners, uh, I just giving you a heads up. Sometimes I'm talking about one topic and then my mind bounces around. So don't get confused. Try to keep up with me. I'm sure as some of you have children like me, <laughs> but yes, I am a grown adult. Anyway, uh, wanted to talk about, uh, the holidays are coming up and the holidays are almost here. I mean, they're almost here. They're almost, you can taste them. When I say that, I'm thinking about Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving, is that a holiday? Yeah, it is. Well, I guess it is, especially since President A. Blinken proclaimed a national holiday in 1863 and set it on the last Thursday of November. So I guess, yeah, definitely if, if President Lincoln said it's a holiday, it's a holiday. Although in 1939, President Franklin D. Roosevelt did sign a law to move Thanksgiving to the fourth Thursday, which is usually, you know, sometimes there's five Thursdays in a month, the fourth Thursday of November to help with the retail sales. And that was during the Great Depression. But as we know, we have Black Friday. That puts a lot of people in to Red Friday <laughs> because then they're broke. They're in the red. Um, we used to love to get up early in the morning, go crack it on and go to the store and get the great deals for the kids. This is horrible. Someone could have reported us to CPS. We would leave the kids asleep. Well, they weren't babies or children. Like they were in elementary school, but they were a little older. It's not like they were in kindergarten or anything. Oh gosh, is it too late for someone to report me? I hope it is. But anyway, so we would leave the house sometimes and this was not every year, but just I would go or my husband would go or we would go. And then it was fun because as the kids got older, sometimes they got up early with us and we'd go shopping. So that, that was a good memory for me. And then I would go with my siblings, my sisters and uh, sister-in-law and oh Lordy, we'd have to do sometimes and my daughter, we would go shopping and we would literally, JC Penney's was our store. <laughs> it was our go-to store and it was amazing, but we would go and sometimes we'd have to do two trips because not everything would fit in the car. <laughs> So anyway, uh, but it, again, Thanksgiving is coming up and it is a time to be thankful. Um, but as I like to say, um, it is a holiday, but don't get me started on how the pilgrims and the Native Americans and everything that took place after the first Thanksgiving, because uh, yeah, people always tend to not talk about that. Well, I guess I'm not either. But anyway, it is a fun time. And I'm telling all you parents, attention parents, if you have grown children, more than likely, some of them are married or someone they're dating someone. And sometimes these holidays can be a little bit tricky on the relationship of the kids. Because both parents are wanting, both sets of parents, the girl and the guy's parents, want to spend these holidays with them. I am pleading with you. I'm begging you to be flexible. Be flexible. And some people say, well, you know, we have this holiday celebration every year. Be it the 4th of July, be it Labor Day, be it uh, what other holiday we celebrate, be it uh, any of these holidays be flexible because these holidays are to be a joyous time a time to uh, of happiness and it can be so stinking fresh uh, stressful on on both sides so like I like to say you should be thankful each and every day I don't need a specific day to be thankful 
I, I just don't. And and now that my daughter's in Kansas, I doubt if we're all ever going to be together on Thanksgiving. So if we celebrate a week early. She'll try to, she comes to visit and um, we will celebrate a week early. And then my son and his wife and my grandson can do either their own thing or they can go with their friends or they can go with uh, uh, my daughter-in-law's family. I mean, just be flexible because to, to, to make your kids feel stress. They need to make their own memories. I'm always saying this. Now, last year was the very first Thanksgiving that we were not together as a family due to the fact my, my daughter had moved. I'm not going to lie. And I hope my kids aren't hearing this. My husband enjoyed Thanksgiving. We did nothing. There was no chaos in the kitchen. There was no running around. But yet, I missed it to a certain degree. And it was kind of odd. And it is odd when all of a sudden it's just you two again. Your kids grow up and they go on. And some people are fearful of that. They are fearful of their kids moving on and having their own life. Well, you should be happy. If, if your kids can have their own life without you in it all the time, you should be thankful you did something right. That means they're not always having to depend on you. But to make your family feel that stress of the holidays. It's just not worth it. The dreaded holidays, instead of be becoming a holiday because they are meant to be a happy time. And sometimes it winds up being a hell of a day instead. So I would rather have a happy holiday any time of the year and I can be flexible instead of having a hell of a day. So there's my story about, <laughs> uh, I will tell you, my mom-in-law, was the best. She was the best, but my mom had passed away early. Let's see, I was probably married about three years, and then she had passed away of breast cancer. And I hope everyone had, if you needs to make your appointment for your mammogram, ladies and men, if you feel a lump or ask your doctor, you need to get those checked. But anyway, um, so my mom in law moved down from Chicago, and uh, three sons were down here, the other in Australia. So anyway, so we were pretty much. That was the need that we had to be there for those holidays. So yeah, it put a kink in, <laughs> it put a B in my bonnet, as I should say, because sometimes I just wanted to stay home and start trying to make some traditions of our own. But I did what I did and um, it was fine. I didn't make my long face. I was happy because that's what I do. But just I'm just asking everyone to be a little flexible because you don't need that stress in your family because the holidays and that special day is just one day and you don't get it back. So if you have to celebrate late or if you have to celebrate early, just do it. Just be glad your family wants to be with you. I remember one time uh, my mom and dad-in-law, they when they were living up in Illinois, they waited almost a week and a half after Christmas for us to be able to go up there and spend Christmas. They didn't open any gifts. They did. They just waited and left everything for us. So that's what I understood. They were being flexible. So anyway, if you can, please be flexible with your adult children. And because it, it makes a lot less stress. Now, for some kids, they just want to be at your house. So they don't have to do anything. <laughs> but anyway, we've, I, we've made many memories in my family. And, and this goes back to your fears. Because I know that some people get um, married and the fear of never seeing their kids again because they're married, that's, that can happen, but um, let's hope it doesn't. And there are so many types of fears, it's, it's, it's um, crazy. So, okay, let's move on. So what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of anything? Actually, I believe that we all have some fear of something. We all have some sort of fear or some of us just a fear of trying to fit in. We want to fit in. So we might try to dress like everyone else. We might want to wear the same shoes. We may want to sound like someone, get our hair done. And this is men and women. It's not just women. So if you are rolling your eyes right now, that's okay, because you may fall in that category. But then there are those people that it's just hard to try to fit in. Do we fit in anywhere? I don't know. Um, I would hope we fit in in our family at least. 
but that's the that's the problem the fear of having of not fitting it in is is it causes anxiety in so many people and if you're the type of person that you just fit in you walk in a room and everyone you know the the angels are singing and the and the fairy dust is going and music is playing because you've walked in a room good for you but with that power you need to help those who don't have a hard time just talking and they want to go places but they just are so uncomfortable I have been there it's like well I guess I'll go I don't know anybody but I'll go and I will approach there's nothing worse than approaching people and talking to them and you stand there and they just smile at you and don't say anything so then you butt in and try to say something but they literally like ignore you and yes that's happened so I am I am telling those of you who fit in naturally because it is some people just have that charisma but yet you know someone who is struggling use your power use your superpower and help them Uh, you know it, it may be hard for them to go into a room help them out and help them just by chatting with them because if someone sees you, Mr. or Miss Popularity, chatting with this person, that will hopefully bring others to want to know who is this person you're talking to. And that is a fear for so many because you don't want to go someplace and fear that I'm going to go and no one's going to talk to me. But if you do have that ability to help people with chatting in a new area, a job, a school, whatever, help them introduce them chat about something and some people say I don't know what to talk about always ask about people some themselves because people do like to talk about themselves at least most people do now um, this also is goes with family too because sometimes you only see your families at holidays and it's and again it's the dreaded holidays so we lose sight again of what it means And some of these gatherings, and it can be at work again, or family, family time, or even in our own home. Like, I know that most times when we have friends and family over, yes, this is my, I'm talking about my family, um, I get a little bit anxious. Now, they know me. They've known me all my life. And and we're not all my fans, friends have known me all my life, but they've known me for a long time. And so I get a little anxious. You start fearing, are they all going to come? Well, wait, and no one, what if no one comes? But they said they were going to come. And then people never go. We just went to uh, meet a friend of ours, her her new boyfriend in Fort Worth. And it was kind of like, well, where's everyone at? Well, people tend to run late. They And then we went to a Halloween party that started at 7, which is early, but some people had kids. And people weren't getting there till 9 o'clock. Well, hey, I was planning to leave at 10. <laughs> so... You know, it, it's it's different. Everything is different. So um, I can see where you get a little anxious when people don't get there on time. But, you know, that's what it is. People, you know, you have to make the grand entrance. Um, but anyway, I do know that when we do have friends or family over, I do get a little bit anxious. And I usually would have a beer or a glass of wine just to go, <gasps> I don't know why. I mean, it's my house, right? But uh, having that fear is okay. And, and, and if you don't have enough food, that's the other thing. What if we run out of food? I do have to admit, I have gotten so much better about the food thing that if we run out of food, guess what? Pick up the phone and we'll go and order pizza. So again, for Thanksgiving, for all of you uh, having turkey or ham or potatoes and gravy and peas and uh, cranberry sauce or whatever, great but now I'm getting hungry just thinking about all that food because oh I do love the Thanksgiving meal <laughs> it's not even the dessert someone it's just that meal it's it's a f- way of food of comfort um but don't be afraid of what you do fear again we all have a fear some people say oh I fear nothing I'm not I'm not scared of anything well some of us have that fear and don't know it 
until it happens. Some of us may have fear of heights, loneliness, rejection, thunder, and lightning. That is just not for kids either. I mean, some people think, oh, they're scared of thunder. No, adults also. Some of us are uh, have a fear of failure. Some of us have fears of spiders. <laughs> oh my goodness, there are so many things that people fear. And guess what? That's okay. I mean, I have a fear of, I'll tell you, rodents. Oh, and I have a friend whose daughter was raising rats for, like, not rats from the street. They were, like, I don't know, prime rats. I don't know what they are. And she would put them on Facebook, and I was like, ah! And a rat has never done anything to me. It's never attacked me. I mean, we get rats out here where we're at, but not in the house. They're always outside. Uh, you get We've had possums, we have raccoons, we have, we used to have roadrunners, believe it or not, where we're at, but I haven't seen any in a while. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm getting off track. Anyway, so we all do have fears. Why? I have no idea. We're just born to have that. And that's okay again. It is okay. And I probably should always mention this at the beginning. Here's my disclaimer. I'm not a doctor. I am not a life coach, a therapist, or a love guru. I was just saying, I these are all my opinions, okay? And it is, again, okay to have fears as long as you don't let them rule your life. I will repeat that. Do not let your fears rule your life because that can be very, very hurtful to your health. No, I think this is just stuff we know. We do know. And let me tell you, I know a guy and he is available 24 seven and he will listen to you for hours on end. And he even knows all about you already and all that you have done in your life. Sometimes we just need to sit alone in silence, light a candle, like to light a candle <laughs> and reflect on our life about the good, the bad, and the ugly. His name is Yahweh, also known as God, the Father Almighty. And he is always there for you. You just need to know this and that you are not alone in this journey of life. Again, I will tell you, so many people will say, but I believe in God and all these bad things happen to me. I also did, I read this on um, rejections the other day on one of my many daily devotions that I read uh, during the day or in, mainly in the morning. Rejection can be so painful in so many ways. We know this. I don't want to be rejected. You don't want to be rejected. You may be hearing this podcast and say, this lady doesn't know what she's talking about. And maybe I don't, but I feel like I do. And I don't like rejection. But what I read in this devotion, and it said, rejection is God's protection. Ding! I heard that and I thought, oh my gosh, that is so stinking true. Rejection is God's protection. And I know that might be tough to understand for some, especially those uh, that have everything going for them. <laughs> but it, it's so stinking true. God can protect us by us being rejected in a relationship, in a job. And this person said it was a job. They were rejected. And it was the best thing that could have happened. Of course, they didn't find out till later that this job was not all that it was said to be. So just remember when something like that happens, anytime, any type of thing in life, rejection is God's protection and he is protecting you from something. You may never see it. You may never know it, but more than likely you will realize it later because sometimes prayers are answered and when they're answered, they're answered in a different way. And you're like, ah, you think about it two months later. It's like, oh yeah, that's why I was rejected or that didn't work out my way. That's why that prayer was answered that way instead of this way. So one thing I have noticed now having a podcast is you can talk about anything and everything, um, as I do, but you can, 
on my account, you can't see it, but I can see where people are, you know, the states or the cities, not your address, not your, you know, where you're from. But um, it just, it, yes, it'll tell you where you're from. Like if you're from Dallas, Texas, it'll say Dallas, Texas. It breaks it up into countries. If you're from uh, Monterey, Mexico, it'll say Monterey, Mexico. So you can see where people are listening. And anyway, and then you can see the numbers, like how many people have downloaded this certain episode. Where I'm getting at is a lot of people are afraid of guilt, the guilt they have, and they can't let it go. And it because something has happened to them. And all of a sudden, recently, I've noticed the guilt podcast is building up. So I'm not sure what has happened in people's lives recently that people are listening to the podcast on guilt. It's uh, And I will tell you in case you want to hear it. It's called, it's just guilt. What did you do? And it is episode 87. And it was last year, July 5th of 2023. But you know, you can have access to any of the podcasts at any time. So I thought that was just interesting. Is something going on with people that they have a guilt and they're fearful of people finding out what that what happened, what they did? I mean, we all have guilt. And I will tell you, if you have done something in your past and you have asked God, Father Almighty, to forgive you, he will. But you got to mean it when you ask for that forgiveness. It's like if you ask anyone for forgiveness, you need to mean it. It just can't be words that roll off, yeah, roll off your tongue. So if you have guilt, you need to know if it's in the past, or more than likely it is, you got to let it go. You won't forget it because especially if it was something wrong, you will not forget it. Did you break a marriage up? Did you break a family up? Did you steal something? Did you say something horrible to your parents? That's another thing. You need to be thankful for your parents. I'm hoping everyone has half decent parents because one day they won't be here. I mean, you don't think about that as a kid. You just think your parents are always going to be around. Otherwise, it's probably good because I would have had that fear. I would have had that fear of, oh my gosh, one day my mom and dad won't be here. But anyway, I know. Like I said, welcome new listeners. I kind of ramble about things. But if you do have a fear and you don't know how to handle it, I would seek God. And if you need more, if you need more of a one-on-one, hands-on, find a therapist, a good therapist. If you belong to church, talk to someone. They usually have someone or can guide you somewhere. And uh, that's pretty much all I have. Oh, what about this daylight savings time? How many of you had fear of that? All you parents who had fear about your kid's schedule really kind of messes everything up. But we're back on daylight savings time. And I'm getting near the end of the podcast. But um, if you do have a fear of certain things, uh, and there's a lot of phobias out there. And I'm, I'm everything I mentioned, like thunder and rejection and loneliness and spiders, they're, they're, they're considered phobias. Ten to one, there's a phobia. I mean, I think when I go, I think back about when I was a kid, I did have some fears. I mean, I remember being scared of thunder and then I was like, <laughs> took a deep breath. And I used to, I don't, didn't do the typical, oh, that's God and the angels bowling. I used to say, oh, God's taking pictures. That's what the flash was. Yes, that, that was my imagination. Um, but anyway, it's very important to know that if you do know someone who is having a difficult time in their life and you know you can help them in any way, please do reach out to them because it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt you, and it can only help them. And you will feel better for it, too. Um, The other thing is, this has nothing to do with fear, because I will tell you, my fantasy football team is not well this (laughs) this year. But um, to my listeners in Atlanta, I see the score on November 3rd was 27 to 21 with the Dallas Cowboys. (laughs) You know, it was kind of crazy because I'm always rooting for the Cowboys. But because I have, I'm on the radio in Atlanta, Metro Atlanta in Georgia, I, w- I was kind of rooting for the Falcons underneath my breath. <laughs> I was like, yeah, 
yes, I got listeners in Atlanta. So anyway, I know uh, I need to get in a Falcons t-shirt because I have the Kansas City and I have Cowboys and I have Green Bay. Those are my favorite teams. And um, anyway, so pretty much I think this is it. By the time you get this podcast, it should be Thanksgiving. It should be near Thanksgiving, uh, maybe the week after. I hope that you all have great plans with your family. And, you know, take a deep breath because our family is everything. If you have the family member that gives you a hard time, just take a deep breath and stay away from that member. Because sometimes there are family members that just, yeesh, you don't want to be uh, around them. And hopefully, well, hopefully we'll have a, a present by then. And do not, I repeat, do not bring up politics do not bring up religion unless the religion is something you can all talk about because I'm all about talking about God. Some people may not hear it, but eh, if I have something to say about him, I'll say it briefly. You can hear me or you don't have to. And one more thing. I know I just keep adding things to this list. Be sure to tell your parents. This is so important to me as a parent and my kids are really good at it. Sometimes, <laughs> no, they are there <laughs> about just saying thank you. My kids are always saying thank you for certain things. And I try to be uh, respectful, especially to my husband. Because life is short. And I know I say this all the time, but we are not promised tomorrow. Be sure to tell those people, especially at Thanksgiving, even if you just see these people once a year, how important that hopefully the holidays are to your family and that you enjoy seeing them, even if it's just once a year, making the sacrifice of being with family. And unfortunately for some, it is a sacrifice. They are dreading the holidays. And I hate that for people. Um, but anyway, I hope that everyone does have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I guess I will have a podcast on Thanksgiving Day. Um, not sure what that's going to be about, but I'm sure you will be there waiting patiently to hear the podcast. <laughs> But I want to thank everyone throughout the world who has listened to Ticket to Life. I am very thankful for you, and I appreciate you, and I will be praying for you and thinking of you. So please, 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 if you have a fear or you know someone that does, see if you can help them out. This is Henry. Go find your blessings, and until next week, I will see you then.